Good evening, good evening, have one John today. God is good and God is good all the time. My name is Army J. Sweet is Divine. I'm here to give you a word on today. And the topic of the um the church at Fifth Fifth Avenue. Um I had a little strength, but there was faithful. You know, and so Jesus is gonna be speaking um to an angel. Um he's gonna be giving them um a message uh six to uh to six or seven churches. You know, so it's story about Jesus giving a message, um to an angels to the church, you know, they had a little uh strength, meaning less people um, cause their city was destroyed and they had to um fix their um their town back, you know. But they had enough people, but they was very faithful, and the Lord would be using His authority to get His friends upon the cross. Now the story gonna be coming from Re Revelation um chapter three seven to thirteen. The city was destroyed by earthquake and after shocking they kept the people so worried you know that most of them that live outside the city limit um rebuilding was uh required you know so the church at, at um fifth Avenue um had little strength probably mean um little numbers of people you know saying so had enough people but they still was faithful and they still got it done you know but yet the raising of the law promised that the believer who will be rewarded richly for the faithfulness they had demonstrated, you know, it could be, it could be less people, you know, like if you got a small church, and it's less than a big old church have a whole multiple people, you know, the little people in that church can still do multiple um projects, you know, and so these people here in the church, you know, they had less people, but they was very faithful. You mean all of them came together and still got the job done. You know, it is all about God and Jesus of you being faithful. You know, being faithful. So Jesus Christ message will go through an uh, angel, you know, to six or seven churches. You know, it's the uh, recession of the letter. You know, so now the angel, now this angel is speaking. This is Jesus speaking through the angels. You know, so they are the they are the words. Of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. You know, so Jesus and Jesus telling the angel, so the angel speaking said, These are the words of him. You know, the him is Jesus, who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. You know, so one, we see that Jesus is speaking highly of himself because this is Jesus speaking through him. You know, he's saying he holy. He's true, in which he are, you know, and two, the key, he said, the key of David. Now, the key of David represents Christ's authority. I mean, he's speaking authority, you know, so to open the doors of imitation into his future or kingdom, you know. So, it pretty much, when you say open doors, pretty much going to be talking about the, uh, the future of the kingdom, you know. So, what he opened, you know, no one can share. Now, Jesus said, what he opened, no one can share, you know, and and what he shared, no one can open, you know. Now, what he opened, no one can share. What he shared, no one can open, you know. So, one, this um, description of Jesus emphasized his holiness and his authority. So, he's speaking his authority, and he also is holy, you know. So, he's saying... Uh, he said, what he opened, no one can shut. What he shut, no one can open. You know, and he's speaking as in God. You know, so uh, I know. And he also said, I know you did. You know, he also said, see, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. So he telling, he's he speaking to the people in church. You know, he said, I know y'all did. You know what I mean? He know the work that they're doing. You, you know, he they're doing good work. He said, I know you did. And see, that's why I be telling y'all. You don't have to be um, trying to show yourself up to nobody and be telling them, oh, I, I did this and I did that. No, you can still do your deed quietly because God and Jesus still see the work that you do. He said, I know your deed. You know, he said, I have placed before you an open door. See, he saw their work. And he let them know, I got an open door for you. 
you know, because I, I see the deed that you're doing. You know, he said, I'm, I'm opening this door for you that no one can shut. You know, so this Jesus speaking as an authority. You know, he's speaking as holy. He's speaking as authority because he's saying what he opened, no one cannot shut. He said, I see the deeds that y'all doing, and I'm opening the door for you. You know, so I know that you have little strength. You know, because they have a lot of weakness because they were dealing with so much trials and tribulation. You know, remember the earthquake came. You know, it tore up their city and stuff. You know, so they, they had less people, you know, the church. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter how less people they had in the church. They still were doing a marvelous job, you know. But they also was weak, you know, because they had, they had to deal with so many trials was coming at them. You know, so they had a lot of weakness. You know, so that's why Jesus said you have little strength. You know, but yet you have kept my word. And you have not denied my name. And see, that's how I am. You might see me cry. You might see me fuss. You might see me cut up. But one thing you can say, I'm very faithful to God's word. I'm very faithful to God's word. You know, I'm faithful to God. I'm faithful to his word. You know, but I had to stop being like the Israelite and stop complaining. You know, so, so no matter. You know, he say, I see your deed. He said, you know, but y'all have weakness and you have little strength. Because, you know, they're just like me. and been in the battle for so long. You know, it's it's understandable to have sometimes some weakness. You know, because you get so tired and you get so drained. You know, but one thing, they did not deny the word of God. They did not deny. They were very faithful. You know, so the church, they was weak in some respect. You know, but yet they had remained faithful in the face of their trials. You know, and see me, I cry. You know, but you, but I, you can't run. You can't run from it. That you just got to, you know. God desired me to um to keep on standing up these trials. I I cry. I be like I can't take no more. But He built me to to stand up to these trials, take these trials. You, you know, He built my body to take all this stuff. You know, and I'm able to take it and still be standing. You know, so uh, so he said the church was weak in some some respect. You know, but yet they had remained faithful in the face of their trials. You know, because of this, the law promised them an open door of blessing. You know, so that's why I say keep on doing the good work. Nobody don't have to pat you on your shoulder. Nobody don't have to tell you you're doing a good job. You know, I be up in here by myself, working my tail off. You know, this all this here, take, take my time, taking care of the house. You know, I try to make everything feel in my schedule. Thank God I don't have a second job because I have everything filled in my schedule. You know, nobody don't be knowing what I'm doing. I'm in my house working hard quietly. You know, and that's how you have to do it. Work quietly. You don't have to tell everybody what you're doing. God, I do this, and I do, you ain't got to tell everybody, because the God in heaven, you know, he sees all your deeds. He sees all the work that you do. Nobody don't have to see what you do. Nobody don't have to congratulate you. Nobody don't have to pat you on your shoulder. You know, you keep doing what you doing, and the only person that's supposed to give you a reward and congratulate you and tell you you're doing a good job is that one person. That's who we work hard for, and that's who we be faithful to. You know, so this church here, you know, they was very, uh, they was very faithful. You know, so they said to open, they said to open door, uh, he promised. You see, Jesus promised an open door. You know, he promised an open door. So the church stood their trials. You know, and see, a lot of times, you will be tested. You know, you have so much stuff coming at you. This church had so much trials came at them, you know, but they stood their trials. You know, and they kept God's word. You know, they also was weak, but they stood their trials. That's how I am. You know, I have a lot of weakness, but I'm able to stand these trials. I don't know how I do it, you know, but God built something inside of me to keep on holding on and taking these trials. And that's how this church was. They said they had so much trials came at them. So they had some weakness moments, but they stood their trials. And see, that's the main thing. The devil can always try to break you into pieces, but it's up to you to keep on standing those trials. You know, for you to stand your trials 
and make it all the way through the end, you are more than a conqueror. You know, and so uh, they stood their trials. You know, so uh, Jesus' letter didn't condemn the enemy uh, uh, of the church believer. You know, because they had some people in the church was was lying, talking about their Jews, and all the while they wasn't. You know, so they was perpetrating. So you know, Jesus go about to expose these people. You know, that's in their church, lying, say they uh, the same um, religion as them. You know, so I will make those who this Jesus talking. I will make those who are in the synagogue um, of Satan. You know, who claim to be a Jew. But though they are not, you know, but they are lying. You know, Jesus said those who are lying about who they are, you know, he will make them come and fall down at your feet. And they see what I'm saying? You know, these are the same people that are in the same church with them. And they don't know, they're thinking they're Jews like them. But all the while, they lie about their religion just to be in that church. You know, so Jesus saying, the same people that's lying. You know, he going to bring those same people to you, to y'all, and they're going to bow down to your, to your feet. You know, bow down to your feet and acknowledge that I have loved y'all. You know, so Jesus going to have all the ones that he loved, his believers, his believers, and the false believers, he going to have them to come over and bow down at their feet. You know, and for them to acknowledge that he loved them. You know, from being, not because of who they are, from being faithful and for being a, a, a true believer. You know? So, uh, so those who prosecute the, uh, the believer, who are hypocrites, you know, uh, uh, in this case, you know, they will one day realize that Christ loved his children. Christ loved his children. He loved the believer. You know, he loved the faithfulness. You know, he don't... He don't love the ones that you hear one minute, you know, you serving, the, you in the Bible one day, you serving, and then the next day you, you doing something else. You know, he loved his belie true believers, you know, so, um, so the, uh, so the church will be victorious over his enemies. And I see Jesus did that. Jesus did that. He made them victorious over his, in over their enemies. They didn't even know they had enemies in the church. You know, you can't be a hypocrite and all that in the church. You will get exposed. You, you remember Jesus met that lady at the well. You know, he talking to that lady. And one minute he said, go get your husband. She said, she said oh, I don't have no husband. He said, oh, I know. Jesus knows everything about you. Jesus can look you in your eyes and tell you all, everything about your life. And that, lady, that lady was so in shock. She just ran. She didn't walk home. She ran back home to tell everybody. But that's that's the man of God. That's the man. He know everything about my life, you know. And so, um, Jesus exposed. He exposed the enemies that they didn't even know they had. See, God, God, and Jesus, they 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 know our enemies. They know who talking behind our back, you know. See, the church, they didn't even know they had no hip hip pips in their church. They didn't even know, you know. But Jesus walked up. He know, he know, and he he's called them out. And had them to come by down to their feet to acknowledge that he loved this group of people that is it, true believers. You know, so uh, they, he made them veterans over their enemies. Enemies that they didn't even know they had. Now Jesus encouraged the church, the believer, you know, regarding his future coming. You know, so since you had kept my command to endure the patient, you know, so uh, sometimes you're in a long trial like I am. And a lot of time it take patience, you know. It's 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 that patience is the hardest part, you know. And they they was in their trials, and, you know. Jesus said they took they dealt with the patient, you know. They dealt with the patient. And so I will also keep you from the hour of trials that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on earth. And then that's what that's that's what gonna happen down the line for us, you know. We will have judgment day. You know, Jesus will come back, you know, and the true believers will still be here. And just like Jesus called this um, group of people out, you know, that was false prophets and stuff like that, and that's how it's going to be a judgment day. You know, they already have a list. They already know who's the believers, who's going to still be here and who's not, you know. And Jesus will be coming back. You know, he will be coming back. And Jesus encouraged the church believers 
He he always encouraged him, you know, for for the future coming. You know, because he gonna tell him he's coming back. You know, so since you had kept my command to endure the patient, I will also keep you from the hour of trials that is going to come. See, then the devil so much trials. Now Jesus telling them more trials coming. But Jesus also telling them that since you returns over your enemies, you know, y'all are true believers and y'all are very faithful to us. He said, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you from the trial that is coming. Cause you know, God gonna destroy that city. And he gonna hold on to the um to the faithful believers. And after Jesus said, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you from the trials that are about to come. You know, so that is going to come upon the whole world. You know, to test those who live on earth. They're about to test the one that live on earth. And also going to be coming to us too. You know, we also going to have just judgment day. And that's what he's, he's saying. He said he's about to test the world. You know, so um, the meaning there will be a future time, that great tribulation from which true believers will be spared. You know, so uh, many people are suffering throughout the world. You know, but whenever person are suffering, you know, Christ promised protection. Just like, you know, he promised protection. You know, he said, I will protect you for the, the trial, the tribulation about to come upon the whole world. You know, so whenever um Christians are suffering, Christ will promise protection of their eternal soul. You know, so the law promised that the believer will be uh, rewarded. You know, riches for the faithfulness that they had demonstrated. You know, so he said, uh, he said it will be rewarded. You know, he, uh, he he know they did. He he know all the work that was done. You know, he said they will be rewarded. You know, so um Jesus said, I am coming soon. You know, so he telling them, he coming soon. You know he's still talking through the angels. He said, I'm coming soon. You know, he's telling them to hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. You know, he said, I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have. You know, don't let no one take your crown. You know, so the church is faithful. That endures the world serve as a blessing. You know, so Jesus would take them to be with him, you know, before the coming of tri tri uh, tribulation. And now he started talking about the tribulation. Tribulation. You know, he started talking about that. You know, he's, he's saying that's what must going to happen when he come back. You know, because he said he coming soon. And when he coming soon, he will protect you from the tribulations that come if I have to come upon the whole world. You know, that's what he said. He said, I'm going to protect you because a tribulation about to come over the whole world. You know, so that means that mean they're going to be spared. Because it said right here. He said a faithful one will be spared, you know, when that time comes. You know, so they will be spared because Jesus said, I saw you did. I know you did. I mean, I know the good work that you're doing. You know, you will be spared. I, I will protect you when that trial comes. Because the trial will come. You know, it will come over the whole world, he said. You know, so the church faithful endured the world and served uh, as blessing. That Jesus will take them to be with him before the coming of tribulation. So, you know, it's, it sounds like he's going to come and take them with him before the tribulation come down on earth. You know, so he also insults them to remain faithful because this world lead uh, to reward in the uh, afterlife. You know, so he pretty much is talking about the afterlife. You know, when he come, when he come, when Jesus come, it probably going to be just with him. You know, because he's talking about the afterlife. You know, the afterlife. And he started keep saying about the tribulation will come over the whole world you know so he leads to reward and a lot of time when they keep telling you about reward it's not no 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 money or no no gift or no present your reward is your name will be written in heaven you will you will have keys to the open door to on uh, to heaven you know that's that's what the reward is you know your reward is because because you rather have a reward you would rather have your name signed on there because if not you would what, what you going to go to hell you know, swimming and burning down, you know, so it'd be a blessing when they say you got a reward in, in heaven, you, you know, got your name written in heaven, you got the keys to the open door, you, you know, so that, that, that's a blessing, you know, so he said, hold on 
to what you have preserved in the using of our research for him. You know, so he's saying, hold on. Hold on to what you have. You know, hold on tightly. You know, keep on being faithful. You know, because he will come and he will spare his faithful believer. So that's why he kept it to you. That's why he keep on telling them, hold on. You know, keep on holding on tightly to what you're doing. You know, you're reading, you're praying. You got to keep on doing what you're doing. Because only the true faithful, you know, would, would be spared. You know, so um, hold on to what you, to what you have. Preserve and use in your, your own research for him. You know, so um, the church are uh, coming for their effort to obey and encourage to hold tightly. So Jesus telling them, you know, see, Jesus already said, I love this group here. So he, he encouraged these people, you know, keep on doing what you're doing. You know, don't let nobody take your crown from you. You know, hold on tightly to what you're doing. You know, being faithful to that word. That's what he's saying. Being faithful to that word. You keep on praying. You keep on reading that Bible. You know, every time no trials came, they still were being faithful. You know, and that's how I am. My trials keep on hitting me. I keep on crying. I may complain, but I'm still faithful to God. I'm still faithful to God's word. You know, and that's the main thing Jesus keep on telling them. Keep on being faithful. You know, hold on tightly. You know, because he will be coming back soon. And he will be, uh, his true believers are the ones that are going to still spare on earth. You know, so that's why he kept keep telling them, keep on doing what you're doing and hold on tightly because I will be coming back, you know, and you will be coming along with me. And that's what he said, you know. So, um, so, um, he said, him that who overcome, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. You know, never again will he leave it. You know, he said he will overcome. Him that who overcome, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. You know, never again will you unleave it. You know, so I will write on him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God. You know, and they're talking about the new Jerusalem. You know, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him a new name. You know, so we're going to have a, a new Jerusalem. You're going to have a, a new name. He said he's going to be dropping down from, from heaven. You, you know, he's going to put a, a right on right on him a new name. And he who has an ear, you know, let it hear. Who will have a, a spirit say to the church, you know, so you, um, God, God like new stuff. He like beautiful stuff. I just preached to y'all yesterday. He about the um, art. He love art. He love everything beautiful. Now we see he like everything new. You know, everything new. You know, so, um, one, the new Jerusalem is the future of dwelling as a people of God that will have a new citizenship um, in God's future kingdom. Everything will be new, fair, and secure. You know, so God, God, God have all this to set up. You know, for our future, when they're coming back, all that power already written up. You know, you know, I, I preached on that the other day. God, God have his own blueprint, you know, and our blueprint probably been written, written 400 years ago, you know, because it's soon, they soon will be coming, you know, that, that's why Jesus keeps saying, keep on doing what you're doing and hold on tightly, you know, because Jesus wants them to be picked, you know, to come to heaven, he don't want them to be left behind, you know, so that's why he keep on telling them, keep, keep on doing what you're doing and hold on tightly, you know, because I will be coming back soon. You know, so um, so the New Jerusalem is the future dwelling of the people of God. That we will have a new citizenship in God's future kingdom. You know, everything will be new, everything will be pure, and everything will be secure. You know, see, once you go to um heaven, you know, not you see when it come down to judgment day, he said the New Jerusalem gonna be dropping back, dropping down here. You know, so that means we're going to be living down here because it's going to be a new generation. You know, it's going to be a new Jerusalem, you know, because heaven might be back up there. I, I, I don't know, but she got a new Jerusalem, you know, so they, they're they going to be back. You know, he's telling them to keep doing what you're doing. Y'all faithful. Keep on being faithful. Hold on tightly what you're doing. Don't let nobody steal your crown. He said, I'm coming back soon. 
you know, so uh, so God promised that he will not just honor overcome, you know, by re um re reckon redirecting a pillar in their name, you know, in heaven, you know, but was the custom of uh Fifth Avenue, um he would make them a pillar in the spiritual uh, temple, you know, of God, the new Jerusalem. You know, so God said you're gonna have a new Jerusalem. He said he he said your name will be written. You know, so they're having everything set. And this power just probably like four or five hundred years ago. You know, I mean thousands of years ago. And all this power written up already for this generation here. Yeah, you know, so uh this generation, our generation, you know, just like two thousand first entered, they thought Jesus was coming. You know, Jesus already said in the Bible early on, you know, he said, you're not going to know when I'm coming. You know, you're not going to know. You know, you, 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 sometimes you, you might know a little something because he said, you ain't going to know the summer from the spring. You ain't going to know the wind. You ain't going to know the winter from the summer. You know, so stuff like that. When that stuff like that start happening, you know, you'll know they soon going to be coming. They soon going to be coming. You know, just still, we still in the 2000. Can you remember? Um, I still couldn't find it in the Bible, but everybody said he was coming back in 2000. I said, I still never saw it yet. You, you know, but I'm reading, reading it right here from the Bible. You know, he said he's coming soon. And he's telling the church, keep doing what you're doing. Don't let nobody steal your crown. You know, there's a small church, you know, but they still was faithful. You know, still were faithful and, and still uh, help build their own their, their, t their city and stuff back together and stuff. You know, so that was faithful people in that church. You know, so the church who was very faithful stood for the Christ in their trials. And they, see, that's the main thing God concentrate on. You know, God concentrate on you in your trials. You know, because a lot of time He's not gonna stop in when we when we want Him to step in. My trial is the longest trial ever, you know, just like the Israelite, you know. Israelite was in their, their slavery for like 400 years. You know, sometimes you in a long trial. I don't know how long this church trial was, but they constantly within trials, what I'm reading, and they, and they kept on standing on their trial. And just like me, I, I, I might cry, I might fuss, but I'm still standing in my trial. I'm still facing the trials. I can't run from them. You know, I, I, you know, I don't want to do like um, John, you know, run. You can't run. You know, God can still find you. You, you remember what, um, Adam, he tried to hide himself. God said, where you at? You know, I know you right there, you know. So we, we can't run. You know, I can't run from the trial. You know, I've been sticking in my trials. You know, I've been, I've been handling the trials. And we see this church. This church has been taking a whole lot of trials. Like I have. They've been taking a whole lot of trials. But in the mix of those trials, you know, I could be crying. You know, I had to pray to put myself together. And I couldn't sit right here and do what I got to do. That means you're being faithful to God. Work. And that's how the people was in the church. They, they was going through so much trial. They had got, you know, Jesus read, I read on them. Jesus said, yeah, y'all had a lot of weakness. I got a lot of weakness. You know, and that's understandable when you're in a long trial. You know. They kept on having trials coming at them. And guess what? They kept on standing on their trial. But in God don't just only want you to stand in your trial. He want to see you still going to be faithful. He want to see you want to get mad and close that Bible up. Like, I'm, I'm done with the Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm done with all this here. But see, the people in the church, they didn't do that. And see, me, Irma, Irma didn't do that either. I don't never close the Bible and say I'm done with the Word. You know, you can say you're done with the trial, but you can't say you're done with God's Word. God want to see you faithful in the mix of all that hard trials. You know, this church was in so much, on um, so many um, trials, and they still stood their trials. You know, and, and just like Jesus said, I see your deeds. I see your deeds. Remember, you was in a trial, and you were still being faithful to God. You were still being faithful to that Word. You know, He said, I see your deeds. So nobody don't have to compliment you. You know, you can keep doing a good job behind closed doors. And you know, and God will still see your good deeds. Still see your good deeds that you do. You know, and it's understandable to cry. Some people say, stop crying, stop getting so emotional. You know, a lot of people in this Bible, including these people in the church, had a lot of weakness. You know, but still faith. 
had a lot of weakness, but they were still faithful to God's word. And see, that's the man keep got to God look at. He want to see if you're going to keep on getting beat down and stuff like that. If you're just going to be uh, close to that Bible and say, you die. You know, he want to see how faithful that you are. You know, and see the people in that church, they was faithful. They kept on taking all these trials. They, they, they had so many tribulations. Trials came at them. But they still was praying. They were still having Bible study. They were still in that Bible. You know, and that's the main key that he looked at. You know, if you're still going to be faithful to his word and all that pain and suffering. You know, I had a, a you know, I, I, you know I, I break down a lot of times. You know, because it's understandable when you're in a long trial. But I still read this Bible every day. I still open this Bible. I still fast. And that's how it was in the church. They kept the, they kept praying. They kept reading. They kept studying. And that's what God want to see you do. He want to see. He, he don't want you. You cannot go to heaven. And you, you get you get mad on your trials. And then you, you close the Bible up and say you're done. You can say you're done with the trials. But you can't say you're done with God. And you can't say you're done with the Bible and His Word. Because he's the one going to take you up. So you can't say you're done with him and done with the word. Because, you know, you you have two options that you can do. You know, you could go to the, to the get some keys to the kingdom, or you could get some keys to go down. You know, and so uh, you have to pick which one. We all going to get mad with our trials. We all going to get mad with our stomach. You know, but it's how faithful that you are with God in, in, that, in that word. And I'm very faithful to my word. I don't never say I'm 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 mad with the with the um with the word. I, I'm mad at doing this and doing that. No, you can get mad with the stone, and you can't. We can't even get too mad with the stone. Cause guess what? The stone is God's stone. You know, been written out for him from him. You know, so we just gotta try to get it together. You know, um, and this church here was very faithful, very faithful. You know, they stood the trials. And they're still faith at the same time. You know, so I uh, hope y'all enjoy this word. And always remember, you know, I'm I'm a witness. I'm in a trial already. You know, I know I got a couple of exes. You know, might not be perfect. I don't think none of us would be perfect in our stone. You know, only one that was, is perfect is, is Jesus. When he was on, he was a true believer, a true light. You know, we, we go... We cannot do our song perfectly, but we can try our best to do what we can to please God. And that's what we're doing in our trial, is to please God, you know, because He tested and He watching to see us in our trials. You know, we we dealing with two things. You you're dealing with your trials and you also did dealing with he also is dealing if you if you faithful to his word, you know. So I always say I love what I what I do. You know, so it's a different you get mad with your stone, but don't get mad what you do. Don't get mad with his work, you, you know. So um, I hope y'all have a blessed night, and, um, and I'll see y'all in the next video.